Are Empire Arrow Troops any good? This time I'm covering Archers, Crossbowmen, and Huntsmen. And as bolts are really a different language's word for arrow, I'm not solid. I needed to keep it short somehow. Anyway, of these, Crossbowmen are the originals, and the others were part of the expansion with Marcus Wolfhart. Archers are accrued for 350 gold and 88 upkeep, granting you 90 entities on Ultra, with 6,210 health between them. Armor is 20, leadership is a paltry 50, speed is 33. Melee attack is a mere 14, with an attack interval of 4.3, but who cares? Melee defense of 17, weapon strength of 24, divided between base 21, and 3 armor piercing. If they manage to hit anything before shattering, of course. Charge bonus is a mere 4, and mass is 90. Of course, it's all about the range. These are literal archers. The unit starts with a base of 20 ammunition. Range is 120. The missile damage is given as 19, but each arrow inflicts 17 base damage and 2 armor piercing, with an on-paper reload time of 10. Reload skill doesn't start at 0, so the in-game reload time is a little shorter. Total accuracy is 20, calibration distance is 90, so 75% of the max base range, and calibration area is 3.7, so they're semi-accurate when firing into a unit. Crossbowmen are accrued for 475 gold base and 119 upkeep per turn. Health is identical to the archers, actually a lot is. From armor, to leadership, to speed, to melee attack, melee defense is 17, charge bonus is 4 again. For ranged, ammunition starts at the standard 22 you see with so many units. Range is 160, the standard crossbow range for the entire game. Missile damage is listed as 18, split between 18 base and 6 armor piercing, but reload time 13 is what drags it down. Total accuracy is 20. Calibration distance is 120, so they're considerably less accurate past that distance, and calibration area is 5.1, so there is wide variety in spread even when it hits the unit it's targeting. In other words, it's not great for Lord Sniping, but not much is. This also means that archers are superior to crossbowmen when targeting ultra-low armor units, including other archers, but missile units in loose formation are a little more difficult to hit by chance with drifting shots. Crossbowmen are clearly superior when targeting medium armor or at ranges archers cannot engage at at all. Huntsmen are accrued for 650 gold and 163 upkeep per turn. You still have 90 entities and the same health. Armor is 25, leadership 55, speed 36, melee attack 16, and melee defense and weapon strength identical to crossbowmen. Charge bonus is 4 again. Ammunition starts at 22 again and ranges 160 despite being from bows. Missile damage is listed as 18, split between 16 base and 4 AP. However, these shots have a bonus versus large of 8, raising damage by that ratio. So that should be 22 base and 6 armor piercing. Reload time is 11 bits. Total accuracy is 20. Calibration distance is 120, and calibration area is 4.3, so a fair bit of spread. Now, what's very different about this unit and why it's so expensive? is that it's a woodsman unit, so trees don't slow them down as if they're beastmen or wood elves. They can do vanguard deployment like pistoliers. They have stock, and they have fire whilst moving. But, sadly, they don't have a 360 degree arc. This is like a slow moving outrider unit in that respect. They can fire while closing to optimal range, or they can sneak to near optimal range and then start firing. Either way, if the enemy doesn't have something faster, they can engage in some very interesting guerrilla tactics. On the other hand, there's a lot faster in the game. Oh well, that's what things like Empire Knights are for, right? I did mention such units can be mobile anvils. In the Empire General Redline skills, Pistol Core offers all three a maximum of plus 20% ammunition and plus 8% missile strength, simple, strong support. Sharpshooter offers rank 7 elites, plus 12% missile strength, 10% reload time reduction, and missile resistance 15%. That's really strong! In the tech tree, Mass-produced small ammunition adds 10% ammunition to all of them. Volley Fire offers plus 15% reload time reduction, which is very powerful, more impactful than the melee troop boosts. Rifled Barrels actually affects these units, providing plus 10% missile strength. I guess the name was Grandfather Nurgled Inn. So there you have it. Now as for how you use these units, what you see is what you get for the most part. But I want to mention something of relevance prior to Thrones of Decay. 
Apparently, a Huntsman General skill that should make archers and huntsmen better versus large and an extension of their range is bugged and non-functional in Warhammer 3, or at least I haven't seen that it's fixed yet. I'll mention in the comments if it's fixed or when it's fixed, if I can. Otherwise, just expect it in the future. Past that, I mentioned archers versus crossbowmen, but when you get to the Huntsmen, it's really simple. They're just better. You get all the good parts about both prior units, plus stock and firewolf moving. Do whatever skullduggery you can get away with, and otherwise just shoot up large targets even more than before. It won't be the best help against Chaos Knights, but it'll be crazy good against Crypt Hogs. It won't be bad against Hex Wraiths either, with the simple tactic of a Flaming Sword of Ruin. That old tactic still works. One small thing to mention is that Huntsmen and Archers are in loose formation. Crossbowmen actually have closed ranks, so that's something to consider when space is at issue. So, magical support and whatever you can scrape by from a Huntsman General. What isn't bugged, I mean, is good. But the Red Line and the Tech Tree buffs are simple and powerful and will get you far. The rest is a simple function of geometry and gravity. Archers and Huntsmen are capable of pretty high arcs, and crossbowmen are not. So the former two can fire over a closed front line, for instance. Spearmen with shields, for instance, spearmen with shields, and at least have a shot at a clear shot but of course will fare much better with holes in the line or flanking, but that's not usually something you can do at the start of a battle, and live. Alternatively, tall enemies like trolls, let alone giants, can be hit without compunction. That's where huntsmen truly shine. They're just expensive. So, if you have varying levels of budget, utility against armor and convenience, but they're all closely related. In fact, archers and huntsmen fire fast enough that you really need the ammunition buffs to get the most out of them in long battles. In short battles, you hopefully already have one. I don't want to make it sound more complicated than it actually is. This is where you are the one turning the enemy into a pincushion. I only advise having at least some armor piercing to deal with that situation. The rest, you can tread a lot of stuff even with the basic archers, though you usually phase them out due to the short range. Alternatively, you need an artillery advantage to make the enemy rush within that range. Well, your empire, what's your excuse? Take care and have fun proliferating the perforating.